Hey guys, so welcome back to the Soul Light. I'm drinking some very delicious Vaxho or mold wine. It comes from a leftover glass of wine from last night. You know, who's the jerk that always like fills up their wine glass and then leaves it full at the end of the night. I mean, depending on the bottle, it could be like $3 in there or $300 in there. Sometimes you don't even know. Well, if you happen to be that jerk, all you need to do is take this remnant, pour it into a pot and add some sugar, add a little bit of water. And if you don't have all the ingredients, it doesn't matter. I just threw in some apple and cinnamon and I didn't have any of that clove or star anise. So then I just put in some uh, cracked pepper and you boil it up. Oh, and also some dried cranberries and you boil it up and then it turns into this. It came out a lot better than I thought and it saved a glass of wine. Let's see if this makes me extra saucy for this edition of Hallway News. I wanna take a little bit of a break from the President Park impeachment scandal and focus on the front runner in the potential early presidential election next year. So right now we're about to start the first press conference that Moon Jae-in is going to give to the foreign media. And we're here at the press center and he's just gone into the room, as you can see. And he's actually taking the time to shake hands with almost everybody in the room. It was... Um, a little bit unexpected, but he's going, as you can see right there, he is um, greeting everybody, including the camera staff. So we're going to hear of, um, about... So we're going to hear a short five minute speech and then it's immediately going to go into a long question and answer session with the foreign media. And a lot of the foreign media has been very curious as to what's going on um, in Korea in light of the candlelight uh, revolution and whether there's going to be a power vacuum um, and how Moon, who is right now the leading uh, front runner and potential presidential candidates, is going to address the upcoming year. Well, it is not clear yet what kind of foreign policies President-elect Mr. Trump will resort to. Okay, so as you saw in the clip, Moon Jae-in took this opportunity to address the international community of what just happened in Korea in terms of the impeachment vote and the democracy movement that we saw through what's being now dubbed as the candlelight revolution. And in fact, this candlelight revolution is currently being talked about as a potential recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize. And so for the most part, Moon Jae-in wanted to focus on the democracy movement that we just witnessed and not focus on all of the domestic and foreign policies as president because he didn't want to seem presumptuous because right now there are no official presidential candidates. However, if we suddenly have a snap presidential election in April or May, would you not like to be reassured that the people who may become the next president are at least thinking about the policies that they would implement? Let's break some of that down. On the Thon deployment, Moon Jae-in said that the deployment should be postponed until the next administration. On the Comfort Women issue, he said that it needs to be renegotiated, that it was not made as a mutually agreed upon deal because he says that the current government, the Pakane government, understands the deal as an official apology tied in with the compensation. But apparently, according to him, in Japan, the government does not view the compensation as including an official state apology. 
And on U.S. relations, he says that it remains strong as ever. It doesn't matter who is in the White House, if it's Democrat or Republican. But he may want to revisit that statement because I don't know if the current president-elect falls in between the normal two sides. So there was one main theme that he was making about the previous Pakane administration, saying that a lot of the decisions that were very controversial were closed door and thrust upon the public with very little public discourse and discussion. And so that led to his next theme, which is the main theme that he wanted to talk about, that there is a mandate now for a clear shift in power and a fundamental shift in how the government structures society to tackle inequality, to tackle corruption, to tackle injustice. And he said, though the Constitution does need to be reformed in order to decentralize power, he did say that the current Constitution is not to blame for giving the president too much power that led to the Chesun Chil scandal. He said that President Bach got herself into this mess because she did not respect the Constitution. So it seems like overall he wanted to be seen as the person that is going to take the flag of justice to the finish line. Should there be an election tomorrow or should there be an election next spring, would the front runner right now in the polls be ready to leave? And I believe that he made a very strong case to the international community that the answer would be yes. President Bach's impeachment particularly for the international community, came way out of the blue. People are very keen and want to be reassured that there is somebody from the political establishment that is ready to communicate with them. Traditionally, press conferences, especially with the domestic media, are very controlled affairs. Politicians usually vet the questions. And so it's a very one-sided uh, conversation. Like, this is what I believe, this is what you should believe, and this is what the public should know. Why are you there? I mean, if you just want to like spew out your opinions, you might as well just go on Facebook and make some videos. Hmm? Mm. You've got to have some of this at your holiday party. Okay, until next time, thank you guys so much for watching and sending all of your love and support. Like, share, and subscribe to all those social media type things. I wish you happy holidays and stay safe out there. Love you. Bye.